We're here at Windy Hill to celebrate Zachy Merritt, the kid from Cobden, 200 games. We thought we'd sit down and have a chat with him and celebrate Hooker Wine's 200 game collaboration with the Essendon Footy Club. Huge raps on Zach Merritt, apparently just a beautiful user of the ball. One of the better kicks at Essendon already in his first year. It's got control, oh it snaps and he bounces the goal through! That's how you do it! They're very young captain Zach Merritt. Yeah, the youngest skipper's the guy's ever seen. Yeah. Well, Zachy, we're here at Windy Hill, the home of Essendon, uh, where it all started for both of us. Uh, it's a pretty special feeling even just walking in, in here from the car park, isn't it? Yeah, it's unique. I remember coming here to watch my brother play VFL um, when I was in year 12 at school. Uh, to be coming back here, preparing for my 200th game for the footy club is, uh, it's a pinch myself moment. It doesn't feel quite right, to be honest. Um, I think there's only 30 other players that have ever done it for the footy club, so... To join those those guys in that list um, is a really special feeling. Been amazing, filled with some ups and downs, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful to be in this position. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty special. Uh, you're obviously not finished yet. Um, for you, it's only, it's 200 games, and this feels like only 200 games, which for most people, it feels like it's sort of the end of their career, and it's a pretty exciting thing for you. I remember coming back to when you first started. I remember you walked into the locker room, uh, you're locker number 27 and I was sitting next to you at locker number 26 and you, and you walked in, a uh, pretty fresh-faced fresh uh, young kid and it, it was my job to sort of suss you out and, and to work out if we thought you were going to make it and to work out if we, you were the sort of guy we wanted to have a beer with. Uh, I think you ticked both boxes. Uh, what are your sort of memories when you first walked into the club? Yeah, I remember being so nervous. Um, I was very lucky to have my brother already at the club so I could ask him a million questions before I walked in. Day one, but uh, we were walking in thongs from the country, um, wearing my brother's hand-me-down clothes. Uh, I think they still had his number 33 on the Adidas uh, apparel. Um, and I just remember walking and seeing Joe Watson and Brendan Goddard, Dyson Heppel, um, guys I admired growing up and tried to emulate in local footy and junior footy. So um, I was just so nervous. I wanted to earn respect as quick as I could. And um, for me, it was just head down and work hard. And, Ask a million questions. I think BJ tried to give me the nickname Sponge because I was asking so many questions, but thankfully Hurls went with Junior instead yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very grateful for, for Hurls for bringing that one. But um, yeah, early memories, I think, was just you know, being fresh at the hangar. The club had just moved, um, white walls. Felt like it was sort of all new and um, I was a part of that newness in the club. So yeah, I was very lucky to have amazing support around me straight away. Well, it was probably a bit of a blur for you, but I remember your first training session. I remember about five minutes into training, Alex Brown ran up to me and he goes, he's going to make it. And then about 10 minutes later, Joe Watson walked up to me and goes, no, he's going to make it. And then about 20 minutes later, BJ walked up to me and goes, don't know about this kid, <laughs> which is classic BJ. Classic BJ, yeah. Uh, but you, know, you, you probably didn't realise what was going on behind the scenes, but we couldn't believe your attitude and, and your sponge and asking questions and... A lot of young players come in either very shy or almost arrogant and you were curious and confident and asking questions and uh, very different to your brother uh, who, was, who was very quiet and um, you're sort of the yin and the yang um, in the group and, and both complement each other but uh, yeah I think the way that you went about it certainly has set you up. Yeah, I think growing up in the country, um, you know, mum and dad, very hard working, uh, very, very very humble people, instilled hard working uh, values into me and my brother. So um, I felt like when I got to the club, I didn't probably belong and I probably wasn't good enough to be there at the time, but I felt like I had to do the work and the guys above me or ahead of me knew a lot more than I knew at that time. So I wanted to get all the information out of them as quickly as possible, um, had so many questions and also felt like I was so far behind in my fitness and um, you know, I needed to spend a lot of time, a lot more hours than other guys just to catch up to them and compete with them guys. But I remember having a list of 40 guys uh, on my phone um, and trying to tick them off one by one, by round one to get in the first uh, 23 players. And luckily I was as sub, so I just scraped in. But thankfully Bomber seen something that probably other people didn't see. I think a few others saw it as well, Matt. Um, and how, just on your family, how big an influence have your family been on you um, since you started? I know I see your old man walking around Albert Park on game day with a big smile on his face, and I always ask him where he's staying, and he always goes, of course I'm staying at Zach's house. How good is it? Uh, how yeah. good have they been for you? I mean, I think growing up in a really small town with only 1,500 people, the footy club was the heartbeat of the town. Um, Dad was the local coach, and then the Auskick coordinator, so um, I followed him around 
everywhere. And then my brother being two years older, um, I would have been a very annoying younger brother, I think. Um, you know, copied everything he did. The, the shoes he wore, the cricket bat he got, um, every sport he played, I basically followed. So um, yeah, it was a really, really fun, enjoyable upbringing with those, especially those role, mo role models of my brother and my dad. Um, and to this day, they're my, they're my biggest supporters and um, people that I love to play well for and think about and um, reflect on you know, quite regularly. And uh, to, to also that left leg of yours. So to bring that up, it's obviously brought a lot of us a lot of happiness over the years, including all the Essendon fans. Uh, so, you know, there's a bit of a running joke that Peter Wright's just bought a new house in Middle Park and that probably wouldn't have happened with it, without it. Uh, have you taken insurance out on it? Uh, how have you developed it? Uh, where has it come from? Yeah, it's funny. I, growing up, my, my great uncle played for Collingwood and um, he's in the team of the century and there was a you know, famous story um, that was told in our family through generations that he used to kick through to my grandfather through a tyre 30, 40, 50 metres away with a stab pass and uh, that's where he honed his skills on a farm five minutes from where I grew up. So um, that was the inspiration for me growing up to be a left footer and um, used to practice hours and hours with my brother in the backyard. Um, over and over trying to be Chris Judd and Ben Cousins and all these amazing players when I grew up. But um, yeah, I don't know, it just was hours of practice. And uh, for me, I love, I love kicking, kicking the ball to forwards um, and setting up score assists and goal assists. So that's probably the biggest joy I get in footy. Yeah, I think uh, obviously the fans appreciate it, but I certainly appreciate it later in my career. I think the last 10 games, you probably kept me going and kept me out there. I know when you got the ball or Waller gets the ball, I'd lead one or two seconds earlier because your decision making and your ability to load the ball and, and make decisions on the run at full pace, uh, there's not many players that can do that. So thanks, mate. You, you kept, me going, <laughs> kept me going a bit longer. I'll we'll keep you rolling. Yeah, I think the, for me, the, the, as I said, the funnest part is, is trying to find uh, a teammate and give them every opportunity to you know, use their strengths and play to their strengths. And um, for me, going through the draft and going through early years at Essendon, I felt like my, um, my ability to find um, a teammate and kick and execute was going to separate me from other players. So certainly something I spent a lot of hours on. And Zachy, the, the Bombers fans, they're, they're pretty special, aren't they? It's something we've discussed privately a lot, the, the passion and the sleeping giant and the sort of unwavering support of the Essendon fans. Yeah, I mean, the Bombers fans are, I think, the most loyal fans in the competition. They're so passionate. They've been through some very trying times and have always shown up to games and training sessions to show their support, uh, which I love. And um, yeah, there's nothing better than running out First, in front of the crowd, um, going through the coin toss and hearing that roar um, as we, we do our final address before the game starts is something that I love and yeah, it still gives me uh, goosebumps. Even talking about it gives me goosebumps, thinking about how, how good our fan base is and he's a bit of a sleeping giant at the moment. I'd love to awaken it fully and um, you know, get back to some, some success on the field and um, you know, emulate some of our past champions moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you on the on the fans thing. They're they're amazing, and the passion and the, and the love they have for the club, similar to what we have. And I think on par. I, I know a couple of weeks ago when you you guys lost to Port Adelaide, I saw you the next day, and you hadn't slept, and you were still you know killing yourself over it. And then I saw a fan that afternoon in the street, and he had the same thing. He hadn't slept, and he was killing himself over it. So. Uh, I think the, the, the day that you guys get there and you, you're getting closer and closer to the success you're chasing, I think it'll be one big celebration altogether. Yeah, for sure. I think the connection is growing really quickly at the moment from the players uh, to all the fans and the whole club environment, not only in Victoria, but nationwide. We've got such an amazing following from Sheeds. Back in the 80s and 90s, growing the club. So um, yeah, we love playing in front of our fans, whether it be in person or on TV. And, yeah, we just want to make sure they're all passionate and cheering and supporting and um, in return we're working extremely hard to, to give them stuff to celebrate. And as far as the captaincy goes, you were, it's a pretty incredible honour uh, to be the captain of Essendon. Uh, it's something you didn't necessarily aspire to, it's, it's maybe something that was bestowed upon you. Uh, I know that you probably felt like you were ready and you did a, a fair apprenticeship, but it's a whole other thing stepping into the job and actually doing it. Uh, how have you found that experience stepping into it? Yeah, it's obviously fitting being at uh, Windy Hill today. Um, when I see names on our locker or when I walk through Windy Hill, when we come back on occasions to see you know, Dana Her Watsons, um, all the way back to Hutchinson's and Reynolds. Um, to have my name semi alongside those guys, it just doesn't quite feel right. Um, it's a very humbling uh, feeling and 
yeah, to run out first at the Essendon Footy Club is something that I'll, I'll never forget and won't ever take for granted. Um, the roar of the crowd is something that's so special and um, I think as you mentioned, it was sort of, I just played and trained as hard as I could and the fact that I've, I've now been recognised as captain is, is a massive honour but it's not something I probably felt comfortable with or ever thought was going to happen. Um, so it was a long apprenticeship and yeah, I'm, I'm happy and fortunate to be in the position now but um, still feel like there's so much growth moving forward as well. You've obviously relished into the role and, and we, we can all see from the outside how much of an impact you've had but what's been the biggest surprise um, being captain or what's been the things that you haven't expected? Yeah, uh, there's so many extra commitments that I probably didn't realise was going to happen um, as much as it has. But I think the biggest one for me has been the ability to encourage, help, support teammates. I think when you're just a player, you're, you're so focused on your own game and making sure you perform the best. I think as captain, I've probably released the shackles a little bit on my own game and um, that energy's gone into teammates, which in turn's probably enhanced my game as well. So. I'm feeling quite comfortable in the role, but um, yeah, I'm sure as we improve as a group and uh, these younger guys come on as well, um, it's going to make my job easier and easier. So, Zachy, 200 games over the last 10 years. Uh, there's a lot of special moments that must jump out at you. What are the sort of ones that jump jump out of you straight away? Yeah, I think for me, the, the best moment or what makes all the hard work and sacrifices worth it is that five minutes after a win. Uh, being in the rooms with all the boys, uh, all the staff that put in so many hours, it's the best moment feeling. I think you get, um, given 10 minutes later, you've got to move on to the next week. That five minutes is, is, is amazing. And then some of the wins I've been involved in to play Anzac Day and win that is, is amazing. Dream time win this season was phenomenal to see Sam Durham kick a goal. but. Probably the year that yeah, you guys weren't there, um, we felt like we were playing to get you guys back and uh, we felt the crowd got behind us and I think we only won three games that year, but the way we are going about it and the feeling in the club to, to play in a certain way, um, to inspire you guys to come back is something that I still think back and uh, reminisce on probably the most. Um, the club was going through some pretty trying times and to get us back on track was uh, something that I feel pretty strongly about and um, yeah, very proud of. Something that uh, you know worked and it's probably lost on a lot of people was the impact and what you guys did at that year at the club and also the growth that you guys had to step up and be leaders that year. I know Waller really came on as a player that year and there was a few silver linings for the club long term and hopefully it's helped you uh, with your captaincy and, and kept you instead having that experience early on. And I know BJ that year had a pretty big impact on you too. Is, is that something you found? Yeah, I, you know, I've had a number of amazing role models, um, both in and outside the club throughout my whole career. But BJ was a pretty special one. I think um, had a lot of similarities and other things quite different, but he was someone I was able to ask a lot of questions. Um, he'd seen and done a lot of things that I want to do. And um, in that year, especially, he was an amazing role model to see how he captained in such adversity in such trying and stressful times. Um, he did it so calmly, although he's not the most calm bloke, he, he did it so well and um, gave me a great roadmap for how I wanted to go about my captaincy. And um, He's still someone I keep in contact with regularly and um, still ask him a lot of questions about footy, the way he sees the game. And something else that a lot of people wouldn't know about you is you're quite the businessman off the field, sort of in the LeBron James or Naomi Osaka building your own empire. Um, you're the ambassador for the Grand Prix, you own a part of a soccer team, you've got many other business investments and uh, ventures going on. Um, where does that sort of come from and uh, what drives you there? Yeah, I think I've got an appetite just to learn and get better and um, be more well-rounded. I think being at Essendon as well is such a big club that with a big profile, but meeting some amazing people throughout my last 10 years has given me some great opportunities and um, you know, I'm, a pretty driven person in footy, but that's sort of the way I live my life anyway. So um, I'm equally as excited to finish footy as I am to be in footy at the moment. There's so many amazing things out there that I look forward to embracing when my time is done. But for now, it's sort of tipping my toes into different aspects of life and business um, and study whilst I can. Um, although time can be difficult at times, it's enjoyable as well to take my mind off footy. I think you've still got a fair few more years till you I have feel to worry about that. <laughs> I mean, looking forward, there's, there's obviously, you can see what's with the change under Brad and what you guys are building now. We can all see it from the outside. Um, fans and past players, how exciting is what's ahead. Um, what do you sort of see ahead in the next few years? 
Yeah, I mean, I always aspire to win a premiership. That's that's the number one goal for me, and always has been. So that's still at the top of my list, and um, I know they're so hard to get, but. I feel like we've got really good stability throughout the club at the moment, um, building a program that's going to stand up against most footy clubs, I think. And although we've got a long way to go, I think we're on the right path to getting back to being a really successful club on and off the field. And um, yeah, the goal for me is not to only win one, but win premierships and, and be in finals contention every year. Um, is a strong aspiration and ambitious maybe, but that's where I want to get the club to. And um, for me, being one of the older players now, um, I feel like creating an environment for all those younger players have amazing capability and talent um, to give them every opportunity to succeed individually and then as a team um, is where I see my role. So in creating that environment, um, that premiership winning environment, are there certain individuals in the club and certain people that um, you lean on mostly? Yeah, I think coming through uh, my first year, I have development coaches. Um, you know, Hayden Skipworth has been a, a really strong mentor. Um, he's now at Collingwood. You know, they have Bomber, Early, Hurdy. And then Woosha, some really good senior coaches that are very different, but um, have given me nuggets of gold along the way and amazing support. And then to have you know, my coaches now, Ben Jacobs and Daniel Jan Syracuse, um, who I spend a lot of time with now, have given me some amazing skills and um, nuggets of gold that are helping me perform my role really well, but allowing me to also lead those, those around me and supporting me massively. So those guys have been awesome. And then you know, the relationship with Brad, that is forming at the moment um, has been really enjoyable. He's someone that gives not only me a lot of confidence, but all my teammates a huge amount of confidence to play to their strengths. And um, you know, we're building and evolving a game plan that we feel like is going to hold up in big games moving forward. So um, you know, the thirst for growth is, is enormous at the moment throughout the club. And um, I feel like I can just fit into place uh, around that. Yeah, as far as uh, 200 games goes, uh, at Essendon, 100 games you get uh, your name on the locker, which is pretty special. And I remember when you were, you got offered the number seven originally, you were sitting there and uh, you said, look, I'm gonna stick to number 27. Uh, I wanna keep, you know, get 100 names, 100 games, sorry, on the, on the locker and it's a big thing. And, and I looked at you and said, oh, I don't know about that. Um, the best players wear numbers, the lower numbers. And you just looked at me once and you grabbed your bags and you walked across to number seven. And I thought, probably shows how driven he is and, and how far he's going to go. And since then you played 150 and that's a life membership of the club, which is pretty special. And then sort of 200 onwards is, uh, I think, takes you into that elite category. And, and part of that celebration and celebrating players properly is having your own wine and, and having your own wine after you. And uh, this year's vintage, we're doing 500 uh, bottles, which is a limited edition. and. They're the sort of 500 best bottles from the vintage, 2022, and ironically, a lot of the grapes are from row seven, um, which I think is pretty special, um, which seems to be one of the best rows in the vineyard, uh, which is pretty pretty cool. And as far as wine goes, are you actually a wine man and into it? Are you a wine and cheese man? Or I know your, your partner, Alexander, has had a big influence on you too. Uh, is that something that you two undertake? Yeah, it's fair to say my palate is, isn't very mature. Um, I'm not a massive wine drink. I, I do enjoy you it. You do like a whiskey, don't you? I do like a whiskey, but um, no, nah, certainly probably as I've gone through my career have started to enjoy um, the, some of the moments that have popped up the last sort of few years. I think the first 100, 150 games, it was just head down and you want more and more and more and want to achieve more individually and more as a team. I think now I'm able to enjoy my own success and my teammates' success and celebrate all the people around me that also support me and allow me to succeed and, and thrive in what I do. It's obviously a very taxing uh, job. It's, it's pretty selfish at times, but um, I feel like those around me allow me to flourish and um, you know, hopefully this wine is a celebration, not for, only for me, but a celebration for all those people who have supported me. And I do look forward to having a wine with all those people. Oh, beautiful. I know that the Essendon fans and the Essendon community has been a big thing for you. And one of the reasons you re-signed was, was sort of talking about your love for the club and and all the fans that have supported you over the years. How does it, that sort of sit with you sitting here at Windy Hill, um, knowing where your career's come to and um, where you can see it going to from here? Yeah, I think when it came to decision time for what I wanted to get out of my career, it was you know, being a one club player. Um, I think the fans have been through so much the last decade or two decades and have such an amazing history of success that I want to get the club back to being in that you know, top four consistently and winning premierships. and. Um, I don't chase too many other players in the competition, past or present, but 
Bill Hutchison's probably the one guy that um, is on my locker. His resume speaks pretty loudly and um, from all reports he was a very humble person and someone that um, played footy in the right spirit. So that's something that I certainly aspire to, but um, yeah, I'm just extremely grateful to be in this position. Well, you certainly represent those qualities of being driven and having that humility and care for your teammates and uh, whilst also driving the right standards. And uh, 200 games is a pretty special thing. Uh, a lot of us are going to be there on the weekend supporting you, uh, a lot of your past teammates, as well as the guys that are going to be running out there with you. So congrats, mate. And I know you've, your family are super proud of you and we're all super proud of you. And uh, you might not reflect on it straight away, but uh, it's, it's a super special thing and an incredible achievement. So congrats, mate, and good luck on Easy. the weekend. Thanks, mate. Cheers.